Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish lock there, out on the pier. Now any locals watching might immediately recognise this pier. We're fishing in the North East at the minute, we're fishing from Whitby. Now my friend Tom, Tom's been in an awful lot of my fishing videos before, he's just down the way there. Anybody who watches the videos knows we like to try and get a line in the water before we start doing anything else. We've got a rod fishing. We're fishing for cod. We're fishing from a pier into rough ground for cod. Now you're not going to be able to see too much at the minute because no, yeah. You're not going to be able to see too much in a minute just because it's still pitch black. As it comes daylight, I'll be able to show you more of where we are. I'll show you the rigs, the baiting up, and everything else as we're doing it. Just thought I'll come and say hello. I don't know how the audio is going to be because you can see there's an awful lot of breaking water, and yeah, there's going to be a bit of wind later on. Just wish us luck. Now, really quickly, that's the rig that we're using it's cart and squid. With a penny set with a panel set up, you see a J on the bottom and a chino at the top, a grip lead, but set on a weak link. Now what could resist that? And it's just a very simple pulley rig. A question I get asked a lot is how can you tell the difference between what's a bite and what's just the waves? Well the waves are usually like a slow pull down on one rod and then the second rod that's just the waves a fish is an erratic bite well we've got two seconds free waiting for a bite i'm going to get tom to run through the rig and show you the baiting up it's got to be some perks of being the cameraman in it i get to keep clean hands here yeah as john's mentioned there we'll go through a baiting up what we've got here is start with a large squid uh, we've got some muscle and we've got a defrosted cartwheel so it's a little bit soft in this, normally they're a little firmer, but it's been out for a For bit. folks who don't know what cat is, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the insides of a female edible crab. So this is more the brown meat. If you were into eating your crabs, this is your brown meat inside the crab. Call it cat, but call it wings, don't they? Yeah, so cat is typically, if you mixed it all up, if you, you remove the innards of the crab and you just take the whole thing, mix it up, freeze it, put it into blocks, that would be cart. If you remove the bottom of the crab and you have the shell, you'll have two wings that we call them. You remove each wing and freeze that individually. I prefer them a little bit better because you have this squid, this skin on the back. It holds a slightly firmer bait when it's not too defrosted. <laughs> right, so. It is, it is surprisingly mild tonight, isn't it? I was expecting when we come up here, I've got about 15 layers on. Yeah, I'm still a bit chilly <laughs> myself, but we'll get there. I, um, I like to remove the base of the squid just so I've got one piece sometimes I find uh, occasionally if you've got these tentacles and you haven't fully wrapped the bait down these can wrap around the line affect presentation so often now just discard that out the way and it's just a pulley rig with a with a rotten bottom on it yep so 70 pound rig body <coughs> all the way through they're fives or sixes six o's six o's and a four row you know and then we've got a 30 pound rotten bottom obviously we're only fishing for codlins we don't need a 70 pound rig body to hold the fish but for the ground that we're fishing in it's quite rocky snaggy if we fished a 30 pound rig um, 30 pound snood we'd lose a lot of tackle you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect the fish in the ground so the squid i don't like to take them out too early and fully defrost them if they're still a bit frozen, you can make a bait a little easier, I find. Personal preference, but each their own. <clears throat> so I go through the top of the squid, into the bottom. And what we're trying to do all the time is maintain a good hook point. If that's masked, the best bait we do is just waste. Yeah, if your hook point's not sticking out, you're not going to hook your fish up. It's a waste of time. I've got um, <laughs> a barbecue skewer here, but I also use different baiting needles. And there's several on the market, as long as it works. So I just try and get it so it's horizontal, it's level. It's, shall we say, like a base to work from. You don't need to worry about putting too much elastic on neither, do you? They're, they're not shy no, of a bit of elastic. they're not shy fish. And we're fishing in, well, it's quite rough seas, the water's very chocolatey. It's, we're not fishing for mullet in a marina, that's for sure. 
don't when you're fishing with soft baits if you pull the elastic really hard you'll just cut through the bait so we're just just enough to nip the bait on so. one of the things that I've I've spoken to folks before about cat like oh this cat's been brilliant I've cast it out three times and it's still the same that's not that's not good <laughs> the cat is the the squid is the base of your bait the cat is like ground bait so you're gonna to have to expect your, your cat because it's soft it's gonna break up it's gonna create more scent in the water so after 10 or 15 minutes when you bring these in don't be surprised if your cat's completely gone because that's what it's supposed to do and then what I do is I just take a couple of mussels and just gently lay these over the top um, a bit again a bit of a personal thing if I put them over the top of the wing especially when it's soft it just makes that bait last a little bit longer. You're building all of your bait on the back of the hook, aren't you? Yes. So you've still got a full a full bend, a full gape of the hook out, and all your bait has been built on the back of it. Yeah. If, well, obviously, if we build over this, exactly. going back to our point, the hook point, it's just lost. Um, and just going back to the wrapping, don't pull down and cut through your bait. And you just want to work it into something like a... A cylindrical bait, so it's streamlined, we're not casting big distances here, and a bait like that, it isn't a finesse clip down bait that you're going to be putting 100, 150 yards. Don't be worried either about a big bait, because cods, they've got, they've got a fair sized mouth, I mean that there's, it's almost like the width of your fist, isn't it? But a cod won't have any trouble getting that in its mouth. And then, <coughs> take our chin out, and again, just like with the, the bottom hook, we're wanting a nice hook point so I just give it a couple of wraps round and just nick it in the top of the bait there's no point in having that too far down and hopefully I'll do the job normal pulley rigs I'll hold the top of your pulley for you, you got it <laughs> so normal pulley rigs I use the imps the I mean obviously the the breakaways if I'm fishing on the clean beach are a bit better I expect to lose three or four rigs tonight. Cheap in, does the job. And then we're just going to use, I bend the eyes out on the leads, and that just sits on the base of the in. And that's the job. There you go. Plenty of flavour. Fantastic, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll just knock up two or three of them so they're sat aside. So as soon as you bring one in, you just clip another one out. Send it straight out. The short air it took us maybe what five minutes to make a really good bait. If you're bringing your rig in and then making a bait, you're missing five minutes of fishing time each time you change a bait. The only part of towel. <laughs> Take your mum's best tea towels out with you. Something like. There you are, first bait change. You can see that's been well and truly stripped. That'll be little rockling. Little rockling and blellies and gobies and that. There we have a nice juicy bait ready to be sent out. You see there how it's clipped down. Hook points are proud. Loads of scent coming off it. Coming off it everywhere. For a big fish when fishing on the piers like this, you've got two options. You can either walk it along to the end, go down the ladders, or you can try and handball it. That's being that you just hand line it up. For a smaller one, all you do is point the rod tip towards the water, wind down as far as you can, and lift it up. Well, it isn't a codling. But a fish is a fish right now. That 
I would call this a billet. It's a small coal fish. It's not what we're after, but I'm glad to catch a fish. This has got a bite mark in its back. Someone's had out of that. Go and drop it back over there. <laughs> right. This is probably like the match angler in me. Or also the fact that I don't really like sitting on my hands. Now we were fishing away and we weren't getting out. Tom has had a little rockling, I've had that billet. And I thought, I'm gonna switch to a scratching rig. All it is, it's just, just a little two hook flapper rig with small hooks. And I baited him with a little piece of muscle. And there's your codling. <laughs> we just need him about 10 times bigger now. But yeah, that's your codling. Tell it's a cod because of this little bib underneath here. And that was just caught on a Come on out you come. Now look, just a little bit of muscle. <laughs> Perfection in miniature. Yeah. You're wanting them like four pound and bigger. Let's go and get it dropped back. Yeah, all I'm doing here is I'm just muscle are soft. There's a couple of little hard bits in it. There's like a foot and there's a tongue. All I'm doing is I'm just threading the hook through it, lacing it through, lacing it through, lacing it through. And then I'm gonna give it a quick lashing. These are only really small hooks. This is what I'm gonna be catching like my multi-species on. My dabs, my flounders, my rockling, anything like that, common eels. Just drop down alongside a pier. This is just something to keep me fishing, something to catch a fish while I'm waiting for something to arrive on the bigger rod. It's, it's surprising how many times I've caught decent fish or I've like some little and specials turned up off this scratching rig. So yeah, don't, don't overlook what's right at your feet. There. That's it, all it is. Just a little two hook scratching rig. Let's get cast back out. Yeah. Scratching rig's done it again. That is a fat shaw rockling. So this is what's pecking away at the bigger baits. And we're just not catching them because the hooks are too big. These are often confused with three bearded rocklings. Because they do have three beards, look. One on the bottom, two on the top. Yeah, this one's a shore rockling. Yeah, get cast back out. That little scratching rig's pulling them in. that bike can you? <sighs> They're not supposed to be getting smaller, they're supposed to be getting bigger. I can't even I can't even grip this one, I can't even grip it small. It's absolutely small. Yeah. A little tiny coddling this time, again on the scratching rig. All I'm doing is this pier, we're fishing all of the flood. I got down here just just after low water. Go on, spit it out, spit it out. Go got down here just after low water. We're fishing all of the flood. Because the fish come in and feed with the incoming tide. Now, on that side of the pier, I've been fishing out onto rocks, out onto open reef, out to sea. 
and on this side of the pier I'm fishing into the harbour <laughs> and, and most of the fish are falling in the harbour but they're all tiny go and drop it back wouldn't even get a fish finger off this guy would you they're just not getting any bigger there's another little tiny codling fell on a scratching rig just on the bottom hook of a Wessex rig the bait there was that's a size 2 hook go on get out it's a size 2 hook there and that was mussel and squid I uh, I did miss a fish I did miss a slightly better fish what felt well looked like a better fish on the bigger rod but, yeah so far I mean how many people have seen on this pair that on this pair that me and Tom are on there was a lad down here who had one two and a half pounder first drop we've had nothing bigger than that billet that I had earlier this is the biggest codling that we've had and there's six or seven people fishing on the other side so there's nine rods fishing on the other side and none of them have caught anything tonight just seems to be one of those days let's go and drop this back I think I've had my headlamp on a bit tight Look like Crichton yeah sun's just coming up the back of us there you can see where we are now fishless the end of a pier see some guys there's three guys on the end of that one a couple of guys there yeah so all in all there's been what eight nine people fishing from what we saw there was one one codling come out about two and a half pound the best scratching best rig for us pretty much was a scratching rig and i just fished that down inside at harbour and i had i had three little codlings on it two billets i think and a, a fat rockling it's cold now and i think it's time for breakfast let's go there we are we're all well fed that was a little bit strange i mean i'd always remembered it that you could get a cooked breakfast really early in the morning around it and there was no air that opened up before nine o'clock was there no. was... you're right back there with your telly Yeah, we did, but the, the weather is like this. So, until next time, yeah. I hope you enjoyed joining us. Hope you found it interesting. All the very best, and see you later. See you later.